So, yeah, that backfired, huh? Mm -hmm. So you know what ended up happening mm -hmm. is you have to now select the orientation ahead of time. And if you don't select the orientation ahead of time, they start automatically and horizontal because they want it to be a YouTube short because they're big into these YouTube shorts now at YouTube. Interesting. So, yeah, hold that there. And uh, there's, like, nobody in the stream because mm -mm. they're all waiting in the other one. You can't, like, make some kind of message? No. It, it'll, it, it'll work itself out. All right. This isn't a big <clears throat> video or anything. I'm just going to be digging through some boxes. So you just hold the camera there. I'll be here in a minute. Oh. Okay. Afternoon. Hello. Are you going to talk to people? Yeah. Didn't you not just hear me? Oh, listen, don't get your Girlfriend, video. you better not mess with me tonight. Okay, so this is what Hi. we're doing. People are like, Mike, I liked when you dug around in the warehouse looking at records. Now, sometimes I do it and it's exciting, but sometimes it's not because, you know, everything that comes in a record store is not always glamorous. So I'm going to dig around some random boxes. And barely can... can hear him. What? Someone said barely can hear you. Turn your volume up. Does your volume need to be up on the phone? No, not my volume. I'm telling him to turn his volume up. I know, I'm just saying. Could it be your volume? It cannot be my volume. Okay. I'm not listening to myself on my phone. Why would it be my volume? Now I forgot what I was saying. Oh, bummer. <laughs> it's not always glamorous. So sometimes you're digging out boxes and it's going to be straight junk. So I'm going to grab some random boxes. We added a new shelf. This is kind of the same spot we filmed in the past. But it's been a couple of years since I've done one of these. And if you look like right here, there's now a shelf. And this wasn't there before. This was a pile of boxes. Uh, so this whole sh shelf here is new. And uh, this is actually the latest shelf. We put this in. Uh, let me put this crap in. Put this in. Uh, like a week, week or two? Now. Yeah. So I'm going to grab some random boxes. And I don't know how I feel about this. people make their way over yeah what should i pick i think you should pick this one you want me to <laughs> are you kidding me? no why not first of all that's oh yeah all right i think you're effing with me why is that oh, this is... oh my god you got oh. it oh yeah yeah Oh, you picked. Is that a bad one? I don't know. Yeah. Some overkill? Oh, check it out. It's a Beatles and Mono. I have no idea. Maybe you should stand back so people can actually see what we're opening here. Like this? Can people see? But half of your face is cut off now. I'd rather Back just have... up and lift your hand up a little bit. Huh? What do you think? You're not showing anything. What? What is it? You showed absolutely nothing. No, I'm asking you, what do you think of the new view? Are you going to literally show everything to me? Girlfriend, don't give me your attitude. I already I'm, told you this once. I'm going to replace you. <laughs> okay. Just so you know. <laughs> Can you not see these records? <clears throat> so... I have no idea what this box is. I don't remember where this came from. This is a Start Your Ear Off Right Rhino title. Hello, Groovy Lisa. Pong. This is a above average box. You picked a really good box, I think. Oh, good. This is an original prong. From 94. Hello. Mr. Mr. Bungle, this is the music on vinyl. We do not label them. Sometimes we just forget. I like forgetting. Because now I feel like, look, I feel like it's I like just... It's like you're can't... hunting. Well, no, I feel <laughs> like, look at this collection. I'm like, oh, look. 
It's like you get to, it's like, oh, ooh, look, that's a good one. It's like getting them all again. Monster magnet. Talk a little louder. Who? The guy down the street, Michael. Goodness gracious. Have you ever been smacked in the head with a Badlands record? <laughs> with a rat record? You think the microphone's being? That's what I said. Maybe there's something wrong with your volume. No, the microphone might be on the front on this new phone. Well, they said I can hear me. Maybe they don't want to hear you. <clears throat> Maybe you should talk lower. All right, I'll do that. Is that better? Yes. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Law and order. So I'm going to actually... I'm prepping these. This is kind of what I would do during the day. So essentially what I'm doing we is... We throw the old outer, outer sleeves. Sometimes we recycle them. We don't recycle them. Like... Not these dirty ones. No, not the dirty ones. No, no, no. If we have good ones, we'll recycle them and send them for like Discogs or something. That's pretty cool. Original LA Jones. Are they for the store or website or so probably both? So this is going to be for the... Door. I mean, some of this stuff always ends up <clears throat> on the website. He wants the circus dolls. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually, this is how I prep stuff for the pricer. As I take all these nasty sleeves off, I kind of give it a once over. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's a lot of questions at once. How do you sleeve your gatefold two LPs? I have, if you go on the website, you'll see a sleeve I sell called a 50 micron Japanese sleeve. That's the exact sleeve that I use uh, for my records in my collection. If we spot anything we like, can we ask for them? Not really. I mean, if you come into the store, but a lot of this stuff is just stuff that goes into the used bin. I know it's torture, but I mean, we get a lot of people coming through the store, and I gotta have stuff for them to look at. Okay, so this is a good sign, right? Look at this. High voltage with cardboard backing. So somebody obviously thought high of this. So maybe we got ourselves a nice Australian original and not a reissue. Okay, so we've got no kangaroos. That's a really good record. We're kangarooless. But still, second pressing. Very nice. What kind of questions we got, Angel? Someone says you didn't look at the three issue around 1980. No questions, just people saying stuff. Flimsy covers require backing boards. What? This is a weird collection. I'm really kind of... I do not. You don't what? Miss the shop. <laughs> So this is actually, most people don't even realize this, <coughs> Benson's big hit, Breezin, is actually a cover of Gazabo's uh, High Contrast, his first track is Breezin. Uh, wasn't really a hit for Gabo. Any new shootout videos on the, on the way? I'm working on Hotel California. I thought I was a little farther on that than I was. Will you have the jar of flies pre-order? It's on the website now. It's on the website now. <clears throat> we really missed the shootout videos. I'm supposed to tell you that. It's coming. They're coming. It's 
They're just so time consuming. It's not even just the time consuming fact of listening to the same record. Are those Kinks reissues? Yeah, those are the 80s records that were on Pi. It's not even that they're so time consuming when it comes to it's getting the records. This is a cool collection, but I have a feeling a good chunk of this stuff is going to end up in the bargain bin. Come on, Mike, show us the good stuff. Show us those wide band deca orchestra titles. Would that be considered the good stuff? I guess to that person, yeah. I did find this box earlier. So this is actually a box that was sitting in our dining room for like three years. Mm -hmm. And I did notice there was a big chunk of like mm. EMIs. Ever had the Human Beast Deca album come through this your store? No. But no, no a tracks, unfortunately. I don't think that's something you're ever gonna find in the wild. Like that's not something that's just gonna wildly show up. That's something like you're gonna. Kind of cool. King's Chronicles promo copy. It's not, not actually too bad. Normally that cover gets really destroyed. Beat those records. Have you ever had a Born to Run script cover? A what? No. How many albums a week does Mike take home from the shop? <laughs> Who knows? I'm sure he hides a lot. I haven't taken much stuff home. No? No. And to be honest, I think I've been bringing more stuff into the store. How's the view on that? Just stay there. I'm curious if... Oh, it doesn't look too bad. So this is a guy that was buying records, it looks like, until about at least seven, six, seven years ago. So I'm looking at some of the pressings. Some of the uh, some of the price tags from stores around town. <clears throat> what version of ACDC High Voltage was that? It looked like a second Australian pressing without the uh, without the kangaroo on the label. Yes, we throw out all the outers and replace them, clean the jackets and replace them with new, brand new ones. Or some of these, like, you know, this is like, uh, looks like a run of the mill. Why can't you watch anymore, Danny? Like, this is like going to be in a bargain bin. So that won't get rejacketed. <clears throat> That's not something you see very often. Volume 2, Best of the Scorpions. Oh, I see. What? Danny wants it all. That's why he can't watch anymore. This is a pretty solid How do you box. The jacket? Or a random box you found. Down cloth. So we use um, spray away with a microfiber cloth. And we just put some spray away on the cloth and just wipe it down. Have you heard the new S-A-H-I-B... S H I H A V. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. No, I'm not going to butcher it. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not a record I have the original to compare, but it's not blue note quality, but it is really good. Musically, it's unbelievable. <clears throat> hey. So uh, some of this stuff, if I hopefully I can find some cool stuff to throw in that first pressing auction we're doing this uh, Sunday and whatnot. Are you looking forward to that? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring a couple bottles of wine. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> Interesting. 
Oh, look at that complete clear spot. This looks like, yeah, this looks like an aftermarket sleeve. No, it's not. Uh -huh. Check that out. That's normally a very destroyed album. Okay, so that is a box. Nope. Did you remember where you get this box from yet? I have not a clue. Okay, you're not doing a good job now. How about what? You're getting in my way. I don't remember any of these records. I don't have the slightest clue where I got any of these records. Because whoever this was, they were buying stuff relatively... Recently, limited edition of 7,000 Nuggets from Record Store Day 2016. This might have been somebody who just had a collection and sold me a box of records. How difficult is it to calculate what to offer on large collections? Uh, it depends on what it is, and it depends on how familiar I am with it. Mike. Yes. Do you know anything about the HMV Classic Collections? I bought a Neil Young after the Gold Rush box and cannot find any info limited to 2,500 copies. A lot of times HMV would take a run-of-the-mill, like they did it with the Beatles in the back, back in the day, they would take a run-of-the-mill pressing of a record, they would add something to it or put it in a custom box, they would number them, and... Really, it was nothing more than a <clears throat> traditional standard pressing of the era. I know they did that with the Beatles a lot. They did it with... This is actually a really good record. This is a reissue, though, huh? Yeah, it looks like Omnivore did that. We're not going to leave the record stack like this. Um, after the video, they're going to go back in the box straight up and down. Uh, no, they're any... going to go in a staging area for them. Oh, but still not stacked on top of each other. Um, someone said, any word on the Asia SACD? Uh, no. If you're enjoying the video, give us a thumbs up, everybody. Or listen or solicit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, a decent box? Uh, yeah, there's some goodies in there. That, uh, I mean, I have to check out that Uncle Ass. It might be good. There's some reissues in there that could be pricey. Because, you know, even modern stuff goes crazy. Like that Temple of the Dog. There's a, oh yeah, the first record on there, in there was the Mono Beatles Revolver. Alright. Now what? Your turn. I chose one. You choose one. I'm going to choose one. So, these are <coughs> George Benson boxes here. And I don't really want to open one of them because there's a lot of junk. A lot of junk. You are not going to do any 45 boxes today, are you? No. Because this is all stuff that I want Ben to process relatively quick. Don't use wood glue to clean records. So... Set cases and card sleeves. Hello, Argentina. <laughs> That's not even a reference. <clears throat> I'm surprised you didn't pick like that one up there. <laughs> these are classical, so I know it's in these. What percentage of record collect collection? Wait, okay. What percentage of the record collection records you buy do you keep? Now it's very little. I have so much stuff. I have so very much stuff. You know what's interesting about that particular U-Haul box, too? It's like a light color. Almost like a light faded color. Pick two rows up and third from the end. The, okay, okay, pick two rows up, third from the right end. This box? I don't know. That's just what they said.
With the last box, would you be able to just price them from your knowledge, or how many would you look up from pricing them? I'm not going to look any of them up. Ben does it? Ben does it. <laughs> so, let's see what we got here. Oh, you whiffed. No. What is it? So this is actually a really horrible collection, but I bought it because he had a little bit of stuff in there that was decent. Now, a lot of this stuff <clears> I tend to chuck uh, right in the dumpster. But it's... I'm looking at the tabs on some of these, and I see West Montgomery, Perky Man, John Lee Hooker. So for this collection, this is like an above... This is an above average box for this collection. Is the MoFi Miles Davis a silent way better than the original? Yes, absolutely. Can I ask Mike how many records records have and if they get all up to Discogs? Say that Can I ask you, Mike, how many records have and if they go all to Discogs? Like my collection? I guess, yeah. Uh, I got rooms. I, I really don't know. And no, I started putting stuff in Discogs, but. I'll die before that ever <clears throat> So this is kind of the reason I bought this collection. He had so much junk. Now this is a whipped Julie London. But he had stuff like Julie London. He had like 300 Julie London records. Julie London. For nice people. Julie London. Julie London records. Problem is with this guy. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Is he sharpied records that were less than seller. Oh no. He's a big fan of the Sharpie. I mean, that's whip. That's going to be borderline. Look at this. So this is the kind of things that were in this collection that I, the reason I bought it. Julie London by myself, but it's sealed. In the original, this is how records came in the early 60s. Uh, you wouldn't get a full sealed record. You would get them sealed in the bags. So you'd go into the shop, you know, the record stores back in the day, and boom. And then the record itself would be sealed. You go back into the 50s, and there was pretty much no seal on anything. But sealed Julie London. A lot of Julie London stuff, analog productions, is done. Any word on the next Sabbath Super Deluxe box set? No. Do you have a crush on Julie London, Mike? Come on. Check out Julie. So you do? You're not digging Julie London? Nope. No, no. I don't think she's that pretty. How about this? She's pretty in that one. You know what she's thinking in this photo, don't you? No. You don't? No. I don't either. <laughs> You're a liar. <laughs> Manhattan transfer. Oh, it's pretty much unsellable. So this is... It's funny that normally these boxes from this collection... Sunday, you said, right? Most of them hit the trash. What not auction? Yeah, the what not auction is Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I feel... So this... I bought this collection, I'll tell you about this, from a gentleman who... I think he was prepping these records. Like, look, there's an $8 price tag on it, and then there's like a bin card. I think he was pricing... A little bit of Sharpie right there and there. I think he was prepping this stuff to sell. I think something happened and he got sick and he ended up in a nursing home. And his estate was being liquidated by a uh, by an attorney. And they contacted me. Do you seriously throw those in the garbage, Mike? What? Throw what? Yes. I throw many records in the garbage, yes. They do have a chance going into the, the bargain bins, Some but if they... Some records do not have a chance. I will not put a Lawrence Welk record well, in the yeah. bin. I couldn't give Lawrence Welk records away if my life depended on it. They are unsellable. They are junk. So, some stuff... Oh, look at that. Pine chance. What is this? this is <laughs> what? Alex Dickey. What's that? Your friend is saying dumb stuff. Who? Alex Dickey. Oh, Alex is back? He's been MIA for Do you want to know what time? he said? What did he say? Mike, do you worry that AI nude photos of you could show up on X like they did for Taylor Swift? <laughs> that would be great. 
Why not donate to Goodwill for the tax write-off? There is no tax <clears throat> write-off because they hand you a black piece of paper and you can put whatever you want in there. If I gave that to my accountant, she would laugh at me. This video needs subtitles. Why? You can't just do that? Do what? Put subtitles on your YouTubes? No. Why? No. How does that work? Oh, I don't know. I thought they would just be lagging behind. Actually, it's funny because... So here we go. Junk. Trash. Lionel Hampton. Did you see those nude photos? I didn't see the nude photos. I don't know I how didn't. you can see these nude photos, but... Apparently we got AI Taylor Swift photos falling around out there. Can barely hear you still. I'm not talking. People are saying they can barely hear you. I wonder what's going on with this thing. I don't know. Hmm. Not much I can do about that. <laughs> you made the whole store echo. Julie London? Anybody? <clears throat> Freshly sharpied. <laughs> The best of Julie London. A lot of these will go in the bargain bin. Some of these are going to go uh, in the upper bin. And some of these actually still might go in the trash. Yes, come on down. Do we got a lot of big Julie London fans out there, guys? People are saying that she's hot. Julie London was good looking. Like, look, there's an older Julie London. Unfortunately, this guy, like, sharpied up her face a little bit, so it looks a little like, uh... She's scarred up. Scarred up. Here, look. Did he do a better sharpie job than ERC? Trash. Like, see, this is quadraphonic, so I can put quadraphonic Barbra Strys in, in the dollar box. Color me Barbara. Now, you want to look at these because it could be uh, colored promo copies. It's not, so it's trash. Now, don't, Basura. Get me, don't get me wrong. I get Barbra Streisand customers, but I get about 50 Barbra Streisand records for every Barbra Streisand customer. Herbie Mann. High fluting. Brazil, once again. Let's see. That's awesome, Ellen. Look at that. John Lee Hooker. I'm shocked to see that in this guy's collection. I'm not going to lie. So this guy's collection, by the way, was mostly female vocalists. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Julie London. Hundreds of copies of like 10 copies, 15 copies of every Sarah Vaughan, every Billie Holiday. He really was like focused on female vocalists. So seeing a box like this was a little abnormal for him. Trash. <clears throat> if we were to just do I mean I don't think people would buy so someone says could you maybe just throw just box and the throw away and sell as bulk for like five dollars people I've seen them turn into clocks walls and whatever sometimes <clears throat> I'll get like uh, people come in from like nursing homes or that kind of thing and they ask for junk records, and I always have plenty of stuff to hand them. Do you have any records from Latin America? Mm, not really. Shelly Mann. My son, the jazz drummer. Ever get any Herbie Woman albums in the store? Herbie Woman? W-O-M-A-N-N. -N. I don't think so. Let's check this out. This might be the only record so far that I'll keep for myself. I'm going to listen to this yet. 
though. Any course. McCartney vinyl LPs? Not yet, but we have some in the store. Actually, these are a couple of records from a couple of boxes ago. Yeah, I'm gonna check these out. This is like a super clean copy of Sinatra's The Voice and a Nostalgic Memories Oscar Peterson. So that's in the two listen to bile for myself. Man. Huh? Herbie Man, not Woman. Look at this. It's a blue note. Of course, it's a reissue to her. Stan Kenton. Can't give it away. Now, if these are like stone <laughs> mint Stan Kenton, like that's really clean. I could put that in a dollar box. It might sell. Some of the capital stuff. Oh, check it out. Nice. BB King. Wow. That's VG plus. Wow. That's BB King mint minus. Ooh. That's a big deal. Why? BB King Is BB King on big? Crown? They came out of the package, VG, brand new. <laughs> so this was a pretty interesting box for this guy's collection. It really was. I didn't really buy it for this type of stuff. I bought it for like the 300 Julie Londons and uh, 300 Billy Holiday records. This is fine. I don't mind doing this. I like seeing what's in there just in case there's a good soundtrack or something. What's going on there? Is a Kevin Gray cut of Transformers any good? I ordered a speaker's corner and I was wondering if I made a mistake. I don't think Kevin Gray cut Transformers, but Transformers. Was it Transformers? Transformer. Who read? That Just was on my original top 10 imprint analog record you should own list from four years ago. It's fantastic. Jerry Mulligan, 1963. You wanted 10 bucks for this one. This is actually one of uh, Jerry's better records. And actually, this is a really nice cover. These MRCs tended to delaminate. I'm afraid to say some of these names that people say. Maybe they're trying to. I know, that's what I'm saying. See, it's your fault, though. If you didn't do a stock check for the Jack Me Off that one time on that record store, you wouldn't be happy. I do not that. have the Risky Business soundtrack, I don't think. So Glenn Miller will actually kind of sell. The sound room set up and ready for videos yet? What's that? <clears throat> Is the sound room set up and ready for a video yet? They want to see the sound room. It's not ready for a video, but we'll do a quick, uh, <laughs> a quick tour. Do you want to hold this so you can... Show them, and I don't F it up. I mean, I'm just getting going in here, adding stuff. You know, uh, we got some gear. Ooh, we might save this for another video. This is Mike's demo records. Why do you keep walking behind the camera? Because I don't want to be on the camera. I look like Dookie. Up, Melinda. Oh, that's my carpet. I'm debating on whether to put some sound right there. So that's kind of a test panel. But yeah, you'll see. I've got some gear here, but most of the there's a lot of gears too up up in the store. Here you go. You know, in the main showroom. All right, let's. Uh... Yeah, go use the restroom. Good luck getting in. <laughs> Here. This is the Glenn Miller story. Why is it the end of the world? Oh, it, it's the end of the world? Huh? Looking better, nice wall treatments. God, electronic process stereo Glenn Miller records. She's got Pennsylvania <clears throat> 65,000, otherwise I'd throw this in the trash. But it's like, if it has that or in the mood, it'll sell for a dollar. Don't forget to thumbs up the video. It helps us know if you guys like it or not. Tell them, honey. 
subscribe too. Oh, you gotta subscribe. We don't know if you like this, if you don't like it. So if you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more. All right, we got more boxes. We'll do another one. How long has it been? Oh boy, it's been a while. It's been, oh, it's 35 minutes. We're done. You we'll said do 30 one, minutes. We'll do one more. Which one should we do though? Is the stuff over here George Benson's? So this is a lot of George's stuff here. So we can choose something from here? This is a weird collection. I don't know what that is either. So this is classical. We don't want to do classical. What is this stuff? <sighs> the hell of I know. Let's Stop do this one. Up. Why are you picking these high boxes? Because they're fun. <laughs> no. No? Is it not full or something? It's just high. Actually, let's do one of these. This might be from our living room. Oh my God! Oh my gosh, you scared me. You good, old this man? This be a good box because I think this... This could be a good box. I feel like these brown taped up boxes... I think they're small. Yeah, small. Small U-Haul box. Alright, so this actually is <clears throat> the Tucson collection. I showed been. you guys a lot of jazz from that collection. It's the box of frogs. David Bowie. So this collection was really cool because it was uh, it was from a guy who was in the music industry and he had a lot of promos. And he had like 10,000 records. So anybody that has 10,000 records doesn't have a lot of time to listen to those records. So everything is really light play. I mean, so everything kind of was, I mean, that's an unplayed record. And most of this guy's collection was like that. Oh, this is cool. This is a uh, promo only sampler. Promotional only, DJ, not for sale. More thumbs up. Wow, wow, wow. Yippee, oh, yippee, eh? No. No? Oh. Boston. Oh, man. I love getting Boston records. Why? Boston sells. This used to be pretty hard sell. I want candy, too. All right, let's see what else is in this box. Has Mike ever damaged a super expensive record? No. I think you have. Not super expensive. No. It's Jimmy Brockett. What is your all time diamond in a rough that you have found in a random box, Mike? There's no diamonds in a rough because, well, actually, there was. There was the one time I found a soundtrack to. Do you remember that? It was a soundtrack to a TV special about shooting heroin in the 50s. It was uh, the nation's secret or the nation's lie. Anyways, it was a made-for-TV special. Carp? It was a made-for-TV special. The only thing, the only redeeming quality about that soundtrack, it was, it was the very first cover uh, that Andy Warhol ever drew. You can go to Home Depot and get the gloves. Do your hands get sweaty in the gloves? No, these gloves are wonderful. Yeah. And anyways, I sold it. Like, that was something I had no clue what it was. I didn't think too much of it. But I looked at it. I'm like, man, there's a guy shooting heroin on the front of this record in the 50s. I'm like, I thought to myself, like, this is interesting. I need to look this up. I was shocked to find out what it was when I found out, you know, looking it up. But I ended up selling that on eBay, and it went to... Went to... Of uh, Andy Warhol Museum, I think, in Germany. Oh, that's that one that we had on the top in the first store, yeah. huh? Yeah. Didn't I find that? No. I, so. I feel like I found that. So 
So this is all going to be C's and B's, it looks like. Ooh, David Ka Kasten. The higher they climb. Casino Lights. Roseanne Cash. Jimmy Buffett. Some unofficial releases from the Buffalo Springfield. I don't think people like your videos. Why is that? Because we have 307 people watching and only 88 thumbs up. Do you think it's possibly because of you? Hi, Jazz Bums. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it could be. I think it's your fault. If you guys like me, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> 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 What's the best sound in Buffalo Springfield? Man, Again. they did that mono box, or they did that box set, which came with, I think, all the stereo and monos, right? Those Thanks, are, Thomas G. Those are killer. Those are really good. <laughs> the earlier Buffalo ooh, Springfield, ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, you really got to get into the weeds with the dead wax, because depending on who pressed them. Oh, thank you, Breakfast King. Uh, and what pressing it is, they radically change in sound quality. So interesting for this guy's collection is <clears throat> he typically, his stuff was just in such beautiful shape, but he must have really liked the Buffalo Springfield because these records are whipped. I think I technically have a jazz record. What do you have? Soul, the soundtrack Soul, because it's like a really jazzy, yeah. it's all about, you know, the guy's like a jazz Norton Buffalo. person. So I think I have one. Cats. Who is the best mastering engineer for Mike? Huh? Thank you. Jimmy Buffett. Well, this was... Uh, Sting Countess Jazz. This was being... Uh, Jimmy Buffett stuff saw a little price increase when he passed away. Did you get all the cork removed from your... No, the big, the big piece is still floating around in there. I'm going to leave it in there. I mean, I'm going to drink the... I'm going to drink the beverage, but. Oh, this is such a Hey, Mike, beverage. can you organize someone to do a reissue of Blue Travelers 4? really want it on vinyl, but damn, it's expensive. They know that that record is in demand, and it will get repressed at some point in time. Don't think that these bands <clears> and the labels don't know that, like, hey, this is a $500 record. Maybe we should put this back in print. The thing is with that record, it's like, I don't know how many the market can handle before it becomes a $20 record. This is actually a really good record. People laugh at this record because it's Sean Cassidy. He did buy the decanter, but apparently you can't store alcohol in a crystal decanter because of lead. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's funny. You buy that. I bought this beautiful decanter befitting of that beautiful bottle. I opened the box and it says, do not store liquid in this. <laughs> <laughs> what? So it's going to go back. So Roy Buchanan. Jack Bruce. That's a good record too. John McLaughlin. Um, love the Wild Times LP. Are you considering being involved in something like that again? Uh, possibly. Is a property of a which is better, the MFSL or the Bernie Grenman cut of Love Over Gold by Dire Straits? <clears throat> I think I probably prefer them. I have to listen to it again, so don't hold me to it. But my instinct is telling me the uh, the MoFi is better. Part of the problem with the Bernie Grumman cut, although it's analog, try finding yourself a quiet copy. It's tough. L.A. Woman is the best record in the world. Thanks, Mike. That's true. We'll agree with that guy. You know, I was hoping that this box had like a good run of something. Jocelyn Brown. Um, is L.A. Woman UHQR pre-order live yet? L.A. Woman UHQR. L.A. Woman UHQR pre-order live yet. Is that a thing? Are these all going out this week? Uh, it depends on how Denny Brooks. It depends on how quick. We've got we've got some stuff waiting, so it might be a week or two. I 
don't think I have any avant garde jazz. I like this. I love these Lindsay Buckingham records. Nobody cares about Lindsay Buckingham solo stuff. But this is such a good record. I played we just went store. through a whole bunch of Julie London records, didn't we? A Julie London for days, right around here. Like here ish, yeah. So this is kind of cool. You've heard this record, right? What? Lindsay Buckingham, Go Insane. Probably. So at the end of side one, uh, it has Play in the Rain. But the, like Sgt. Pepper, the last groove is locked on this record. So it plays part of the song. But the song was designed to where it's a riff that plays over and over and over again. And then when you start side two, it continues the song. But you'll play side one and you'll listen to that last track for five, six minutes before you realize, wait a minute, we're in the <clears> long <throat> groove and then you got to get up and flip it. I don't work at the in-group anymore. I'm just volunteering so I can be with my beautiful fans here tonight at the in-groove live stream. Uh, I see so many of those U-Haul boxes with records inside. Were they made specifically for records? I doubt it. No, nope, but they sure work perfectly. And I'm a little disappointed in this box. This guy had some good stuff, but... Brain Damage Orchestra. Favorite records are other than your own. No, the guy down the street. You might be talking to you. Come on, girlfriend. I don't go record, record shopping. Don't lie. I feel like we should look at one. Did more. you ever get your Chanel purse as a retirement gift? I did get a Chanel bag, but I need another one. It's purple. Yeah, she needs it's one. beautiful. It's color now. So if you guys give me a thumbs up, that means Mike has to buy it. What? So keep giving me no. thumbs up. No. <laughs> Down that shit. <laughs> there ain't enough records here to pay for any Chanel purses. Let me see. I think you should do that one. Are you high? Right there. No, do I'll that take one. a pass on that. <laughs> I'm gonna do that one. <clears throat> hey, three people think you should get me a Chanel purse. Okay, well, one of those three people can mail it to you. Thumbs up again, thumbs up again. <laughs> Yeah, we don't know what's in these boxes anymore, so we can't specifically choose something. The only thing I can tell you I know is I can point out some classical. I love Angel Mike. It's just okay. Woohoo. There you go. <laughs> you know what's a cool thing? And I'll show you one of these. Mm -hmm. You're talking about our jump ropes for Rum DNC? Yes. <laughs> this isn't Rum DNC. This was, oh, was uh, it? I thought it was. No, the House of Pain. Oh, yeah, you're right. Jump around? Yeah. So this is a jump around rope. It was like a promotional item that came with the album Jump Around if you got the deluxe version. We actually have a label maker. He just chooses not to put notes on anything. I don't need a label maker. I have sharp. That too, yeah. Interesting box. What is it? Ooh, someone with a C gave a $5. What's that? How do you see what that is? Why don't I see that? What's this? Click it. Do they add? Oh. No? Wait. Oh. <gasps> Michael. Oh. What are the comments? Do something interesting now, Mike. I am doing something interesting. Am I not? Can you moonwalk? Nah. Not sure if you had a question, person with a C. Uh, I think the employees put them way up there. <laughs> but we have really tall ladders. We have like um, one of those ladders that you see in Home Depot. Those big humongous ones with the stairs. I can't do a backflip. Can you can y'all please find another price tag for your vinyl that actually comes off without damaging the outer sleeve? Undo. Buy undo. You should own undo if you collect records because undo is fantastic. It works on <coughs> price tags adhered directly to the cardboard. It works on price tags for anything. Undo is a must-have. But I can't do that because it's 
Art inventory is live in a retail setting. So sometimes when you're dealing with the public, some people are unscrupulous and they try to do unscrupulous things. Oh, well, thank you. Oh my God, that's a box of coins. So. so, you know, you're going to have tags that don't come off, unfortunately. Why don't you open the box over there with the good records in it? Yeah, it's... <laughs> Do you know where any psych might be? I'm going to do this one box just because I started perusing it and I was really shocked. Because I was, I don't really know where this box came from either. What is undo? Undo, it's like an ad adhesive remover. You can get it like at Home Depot or something, Hobby right? Hobby Lobby, yeah. yeah. Check out this box. <clears throat> This will be our last box. This is weird. I don't know where this came from. Dave Mason. But there's one thing in particular in here that really interests me. <laughs> Have you ever rang someone up and realized they switched the price tag? Do you remember that guy we had like a mint? It was during record store day. No, I know. Yeah. They're, they're asking though. Yes, it has happened. Mike Sassanger, do you recommend those U-Haul boxes for storing records for moving? Yes. If you're the one doing the moving, don't have a mover do it because they'll destroy it. Yeah, but that, that was a problem we had for a while there. Yeah, because our price tags came off really easy. So we had to kind Andrew, of put the kibosh on that. What is your, Angel, what is your opinion of T-Swift going to the Super Bowl? I really don't give a dookie, honestly. So this is what was Good interesting for her, about I guess. this box is all of the kinks that's in it. And it's super clean. It's like a full run of crispy clean kinks. Are there any particular vinyl stores in Los Angeles or Las Vegas you love visiting? It's been so long since I've been. So look at some. Look How do you spell it? Undo. U N D U. U N D U. Look at that. That's like a near man kind of uh, something else. That's such a hard record to get in this shape. Come on, piece. It's because it's. Girlfriend, don't give me that look. Listen. Girlfriend, we're going to fight. Yeah. Look at this. Mono face to taped up. Mike, will you be removing Sam Records from your top 100? Why would you be doing that? What happened? It's not the label. It's just that one record that's digital, if that's what you're asking. Yeah, Amazon has everything. Amazon. Hmm? Yeah, I know. Look at that beautiful King's Controversy. Do you see? Like, this is what's weird about this box. Is I don't, I don't know where this came from either. But it just had a huge run of Kinks in it. I found this the other day, but I only saw the Kinks. Mike, all those earlier Wes Montgomery albums, I will buy them at all. <clears throat> I really would like to get the copy of A Day in the Life. If you would be willing to ship them, I know you're super busy. Just unfortunately, this kind of stuff, I just, it's got to go through the store. Yeah, Ecos, go ahead, tell them. <laughs> I got my Ingroup shirt off Amazon. <laughs> what a great record. Let's see if it's a two-tone. Yeah, look at that beautiful first pressing. At least a hundred dollar record. I don't think Amazon has our t-shirts. Oh, look at this. Beautiful kinks. Oh, look. With the pull tab and it's not destroyed. Cute. Queen Victoria. Cute. Beautiful, beautiful. I, I think some of these are going to end up on the, uh, some of these are going to end up on the, the first pricing auction we've got going on, whatnot. 
Whew, my hand's starting to cramp. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Dave Mason. You think I'm gonna see these? Because I'm not pulling these. Oh, wait, no. Log into Messina. Some little feet. Ooh. Oops. Wow, that's really nice. The litter, clean. Every time I get that and it's pretty whipped. Some John Lennon. It's interesting. So there's a lot of kinks in this box. It's kind of somewhat alphabetized. There's a lot of kinks, a lot of Lennon, Love and Spoonful, Leonard Skinner. Mike, have you ever pumped any vinyl from Hot Topic or Urban Outfitters? What's that mean? Like went and bought something? Uh, I've got a few Lana Del Rey Urban Outfitters exclusives. I've bought in a few of those. Some more kids. Mike, high efficiency speakers you recommend that aren't Klipsch? I mean, I'm not a... I don't have a lot of experience with a ton of high efficiency speakers. I mean, that's not the kind of listening I personally do. There's some stuff I sell, but I like bigger... We have found drugs and money in records. Boy, this is straight trash right here. Any hmm. Gary Newman gems? No, no Gary Newman in this. How do you feel about K-Star? You like K-Star? Never even heard of that person. All the hits. Look at all. Wow. $15 for K-Star jazz singer. This is what he was going to ask for this record. I would go out on a hunch and say that there's a good chance that this is going to go in the dark dumpster. Funniest thing you have found in record sleeves. That letter to God. <sighs> letter Remember to that God? Three page letter to God? I think so, yeah. Double click. I did. No, you didn't. Oh, I did. You're right. I only did one click. A letter to God. Mike wears gloves because his hands are baby, baby butt soft, and he doesn't want to mess that up. It's starting to catch on, though. I'm seeing a lot of other people wear gloves. People send me videos. They're like, look, <coughs> so-and-so is wearing gloves now. <clears throat> Mike has the softest hands I've ever felt my whole entire life because he protects them, and he doesn't even put lotion on them. They're executive hands. Yes, he doesn't put lotion or anything. He just wears the gloves, and he has baby soft hands. Baby butt soft hands. Baby butt. I'm gonna put this one back on the shelf. <clears throat> that's enough for Ben to, to go through. <laughs> Although I took those kinks. Apparently you're a dill funny. <laughs> That's How many it. people are watching? 306. Feels bad to cut them off. But, uh, We've been doing this for uh, one hour. We're done. We're going to go home. You know what? Uh, let me get a view. No. You sure? I look like Dookie. Okay, bye. Okay. I, uh, I just rest the X. Until next time. Until next time. That is not how you turn it off. Okay, show me. That's what I just said. You got to click in. Oh, my gosh.